The use of ayahuasca for personal exploration, physical and emotional healing, religious practice, and shamanic deeds has grown recently both in the United States and worldwide. Research into anthropological and biomedical aspects of ayahuasca has dramatically increased. Among this current group of ayahuasca users are gay and lesbian people using ayahuasca both in neo-shamanic circles and in the organized Brazilian ayahuasca religions that are based on the use of the tea. Despite the rise in studies on ayahuasca use, their stories have rarely been told. So first, I'm going to talk about conversion therapy, which was an, an initial use that people made of hallucinogenics in regard to gay people. Conversion therapy, or re reparative therapy, is the attempt to change the sexual orientation of gay people. Sigmund Freud first posited that homosexuality could be cured through hypnosis. During Freud's time, Dr. Steinack tried to do the same by transplanting testicles of straight men to gay men. It was not successful. <laughs> Early psychoanalysts did not necessarily assume homosexuality was pathological, but that opinion changed in the 20s and 30s when it was def defined as a perversion. In 2001, the Surgeon General of the United States agreed with the American Psychological Association saying conversion therapy had no scientific justification. And recently in California, they tried to pass a law that made conversion therapy illegal but that's being fought in the court by uh, Christian therapists who want to continue that practice. Um, early research with psychedelics fo focused on the conversion of gay people to heterosexuality. Martin in 1962 reported that seven out of 12 subjects treated with LSD became primarily heterosexual after that. Stafford and Golightly in 1967 treated homosexuals with LSD and found that they either achieved peace with their orientation or became heterosexual after the treatment. Alpert, which is also known as Ram Dass, treated a gay man, which is reputed to be himself, with LSD in an attempt to change his orientation. The patient was encouraged to have sex with a woman during his LSD session and was shown pictures of women and encouraged to feel positively about them. Masters in Houston in 1966 reported experiments with peyote that they felt had some success in changing sexual orientation in gay men. They claimed that the subjects who did not change orientation had considerable investment in their homosexuality <laughs> and were unable to capitalize on the gains made during the treatment. Groff in 2000 treated homosexuals with, who were dissatisfied with their orientation with LSD. He believed that fear of vagina dentata was prevalent in gay men, and lesbianism was related to a desire to be close to the mother. <coughs> so um, when I started to do this research, I had several people ask me, like, why are you choosing this topic? There's more important groups, like, why not men versus women, or people from different countries, or break it up by practice? So this is my rationale. According to several authors, ayahuasca has a tendency to incite religious or spiritual feelings. It also, it also often causes shifts in identity and personal psychological insights. Gay and lesbian populations have suffered oppression for many years and frequently report self-esteem problems related to identity issues. Research into the experience of gay and lesbian ayahuasca users can help show how this minority understands issues of identity and spiritual development. And it can help clinicians and researchers understand how perception of identity is influenced by the in, in the context of religious experiences and rituals, and how sexual minorities navigate conflicts with religious doctrine and, that, and community, both internally and externally. Why is this research important? Research on ex experience with ayahuasca suggests reports from participants may focus on issues of identity, emotional healing, and self-acceptance. These topics may be of particular relevance to gay and lesbian people. It is worthwhile to explore how they interpret their ayahuasca experiences. This research will be useful in gaining better understanding of the accommodation and interpretations gay and lesbian people make to find their place in religious community and within religious and spiritual philosophies. Because of the new and evolving nature of ayahuasca religions and the esoteric nature of shamanic practices, a broad spectrum of beliefs and reactions may be expected. This is my method, a content analysis of interviews with 17 gay and lesbian adults 
who have used ayahuasca with at least one other person in the past three years. Participants from both ayahuasca religions, the, the international ones, the UDV and the um, Santo Daime, and neo-shamanic circles were recruited. And there was also one other Afro-Brazilian um, practice that I actually can't remember the name of, but it's an African name that was included. Um, 17 interviews were conducted, 12 gay men were interviewed, five women, um, four were lesbian, and one was, she was a lesbian bisexual. She had been dating a woman and then her girlfriend turned into a, became a transgender, so. 14 were white, one Mexican, white, biracial, one Native American, and one Latino. 15 lived in the United States, one in Canada, and one was staying in the Republic of the Congo. All participants were born in the USA, except one was Brazilian, one was Italian, and one was born in Canada. <clears throat> so first I'm gonna talk about Santo Daime to give some context to the responses. Santo Daime is a Christian religion. The church culture in the Amazon, where it comes from, is conservative, emphasizing modesty and virginity. <clears throat> the church is hierarchical and the leaders have mystical authority. One major leader, Alex Polari, has expressed anti-gay sentiments in the book um, Forest of Visions, referring to gays as degenerates and echoing those of the Sephlurus or Icy Flues branch founder in one of the few books written by a Santo Daime church official. At least two of the main leaders of Santo Daime practice polygamy, which is maybe more um, common in, in that area of the world. Um, Pedrino Alfredo, the leader of the main international branch of Santo Daime, said in a newspaper interview in 2007, I cannot judge the homosexual who is faithful to the doctrine. We trust his evolution as a divine being. Um, in the United States, one gay couple has been married in church and the church culture matches the liberal alternative lifestyles of many of the members. The church here is, is very different than the church in Brazil. And to compare shamanism, the, the participants in this research experienced ayahuasca rituals conducted either at a center for this purpose in Peru or with a shaman who visited the United States or Canada. They were not members of residential communities where shamans live and not familiar with the views uh, of the communities on homosexuality. And the shamans did not express their views on sexual orientation to the participants involved, interviewed. However, several participants felt that Peruvian culture was homophobic and that the shaman may have been as well. So I, I divided the, the responses up and coded them according to the following factors. One was the effect of ayahuasca on identity in general, the effect of ayahuasca on identity regarding sexual orientation, the effect of ayahuasca on sexuality in general, the effect of um, uh, comfort with group members, comfort with belief of group regarding sexual orientation, the effect of ayahuasca on spirituality, the effect of ayahuasca on life in general, aspects of the practice that participants felt uncomfortable about, perception of externally appreciable change, like what did other people notice about the participants, and plans for change in future use. Um, the eight, eight of the participants drank only with shaman. Four participants were Santo Daime members. Four participants drank both with Santo Daime and shamans. And one participant practiced the Afro-Brazilian religion that I referred to earlier. Um, in the first um, coding category about identity in general, participants all had positive reflections on changes to their identity. Some seeing themselves as divine beings and healers working on the spirit plane. Participants in both Santa Daime and the shaman circles achieved new identities which they valued within their ayahuasca using communities. And so some quotes I've extracted from the interviews. I've always felt I was from another planet, growing up fat, gay, and unathletic. Daimi showed me I have a mission on earth. Another person said, my identity shifted so profoundly, it was shocking to me. Regarding um, identity, regarding sexual orientation, participants reported that ayahuasca helped with feelings of shame common to gay and lesbian people. Some said it helped them to be more comfortable with gender fluidity. Some participants felt a deep affirmation of their sexual orientation and a clarity about this issue. I'm more loving, comfortable, and familiar with myself and my sexual expression. 
Someone else said, I realize that my sexuality is so healthy, so intrinsic, so much a part of me, not to be expressed or embraced is letting myself live in a world with one part of me damped down and unexpressed. Its um, effect on sexuality in general was, went in two different directions. Two participants said they no longer felt sexual at all. One, one was a dimista, the other followed shamanic dietas. The rest felt their sexual lives were enhanced, particularly by increasing personal connection with a partner. One respondent noted that as a result of taking ayahuasca, he had increased his safer sex practices. I have had a profound opening in terms of my own sexuality. I had not known <clears throat> I was sexually abused as a child. Sexuality and spirituality are unified in a way they never were before. And another person said, it freed me from having sex for sex sake. It's about love now. Um, in the category of comfort with group members, all participants were out about their sexual orientation with the groups they drank with in the United States. Some disguised or did not mention their orientation to the visiting shaman. Dimistas also said they did not discuss their sexual orientation with Brazilian dimistas. They noted that it seemed the Brazilians were uncomfortable with homosexuality. One person said, I feel some church members are careful around me. I do not touch people in ceremonies because that might be misinterpreted. Another said, I've had nothing but complete acceptance and complete unconditional support and friendship in Santo Daime. Comfort with beliefs, about, beliefs of the group about sexual orientation. Participants in Santo Daime tended to ignore negative statements related to sexual orientation or statements that characterize gay people as sinners, attributing such ideas to the homophobic culture of Brazil and lots of other places too. People who drank with shamans most often did not know the shaman's view on homosexuality. And these are the quotes from that, from that um, section. Spirituality that can't deal with sexuality doesn't seem valid to me, one person said. Another said, I find it hard to believe that someone working with ayahuasca would have that kind of homophobic viewpoint. Ayahuasca will cure you of it. Another person said, I was married to my gay partner in a Santo Daime church. I ignore the parts of Christianity I view as perversions of Christ's message. That was very common. <clears throat> Um, in the category, Ayahuasca's ex ayahuasca experiences impact on life in general, participants used many superlatives. Self-acceptance ranked high on changes affected. One respondent confronted her childhood sexual abuser. Another gave up his addictions to sex and pornography. No one reported negative effects. <clears throat> Quotes I extracted from this were, the most healing thing I've ever experienced. It put the pieces of my life back together, purged things holding me back. Another respondent said, I arrived in my body for the first time. Everything in my life is completely and totally different than it was. And another person said, every area of my life has changed. I eat healthier, stop taking meds, and I try to be more green. Um, aspects causing discomfort included legal issues around ayahuasca use in the US. The respondents from Santo Daime cited the patriarchal and hierarchical nature of the religion and lack of accountability of leaders around money and sexual improprieties. Those who drank with shamans also commented on discomfort with stories of sexual opportunism among shamans. I feel uncomfortable, this is a quote, I, feel, I felt uncomfortable with the elements of dogma, judgment, and the patriarchal paradigm of Santo Daime. One person described the abuse of power by those who put themselves out there as healers. <clears throat> And then perception of externally appreciable change. This is what other people noticed about the participants or what they heard back. Um, when asked what other people might notice that is different about them since they first drank ayahuasca, respondents noted an increase in humility and ability to listen and said that others sought them out for spiritual counsel. One person said, wow, you seem grounded. Um, you seem much more present. Another person said, I have the courage to open my mouth now and recognize and express negative feelings. My friends say, wow, you have grown in your capacity to be honest. Another person said, I'm less of an asshole, more mellow. So this study was conducted on self-identified gay people raised in or currently living in North America who answered an ad on the internet for gay ayahuasca users. So people who had negative experiences are less likely to be reading the ayahuasca notice boards and newsletters or to respond to calls from ayahuasca researchers. 
Equal numbers of men and women were sought, but lesbians were hard to enlist, partly due to an aversion to labels and a tendency for women who had sex primarily with women to identify as bisexual. Um, some more caveats. This research did not include people who had converted to heterosexuality after joining a church or after more extensive involvement in shamanic circles. Anecdotal reports state that after joining Santo Daime, some gay and lesbian people become asexual. This research did not include that population. And the situation in Brazil is very different with members of ayahuasca religions choosing to adopt straight lifestyles, conforming to group expectations and ideals. So these are the first conclusions. All of the 17 had positive statements to varying degrees about the effects of ayahuasca on their identity and their relationship to their sexual orientation. Sexuality was affected by either being enhanced or losing importance. For 16 participants, spirituality was greatly enhanced by ayahuasca use. One respondent continued to feel alienated by the spiritual focus. All reported very positive effects of ayahuasca practice on their lives, including such benefits as enhanced relationships, increase in humility and calmness, and a sense of purpose. Cultural differences with South American countries in regard to negative views of homosexuals were cited as issues for several respondents. Some hid their orientation from the shaman or church members when in South America. Shamanic users had less perception of anti-gay dogma or beliefs than Santo Daime practitioners. Participants reported negative experiences with lack of accountability for leaders, financial and sexual improprieties, homophobia and patriarchy in the Santo Daime setting, as well as sexual opportunism and assumed or feared homo homophobia of shamans. And some suggestions for future research. Research comparing gay and lesbian ayahuasca users in South America would illuminate how cultural differences impact interpretations of experience. No members of the UDV were included in this study. The UDV has officially stated in an internal document, we can never agree with the practice of homosexuality as it goes against the natural origin of human existence. Yet they welcome gay people who seek to improve themselves. How do gay members perceive and work with this fact? Research on people who chose a straight lifestyle after encountering ayahuasca could reveal how accommodations are made and how successful these are. And question, could ayahuasca be used in therapeutic settings by gay and lesbian people experiencing identity issues? Further research is needed. So thank you very much.